guys, it is Elisa here or The Diamond Stitcher as I go by on YouTube and Instagram. Hello, good morning or good afternoon or whatever time of day it is you are watching this. I hope you're having a wonderful one. If you are new to my channel, first off, welcome. I'm happy you found me and I hope you would consider subscribing and stick around for all things diamond painting. And if you are returning, thank you so much for your continued support. It is early Saturday morning that I am filming this. It's about six o'clock in the morning. The sun is rising and I'm feeling pretty good. So I thought I would sit down and try to get a bit of a whip and chat out before my husband wakes up and makes all sorts of noises. Now, I'm gonna be working on one of the mini dazzle sets from Diamond Art Club, the floral one. I've got a rose here to work on uh, during the whip and chat. If I finish it, I will work on another one. I finished two from this set actually. I finished the tulip one yesterday, which is here. And I finished this one a couple days ago, which is the lavender one. With these mini dazzle sets, they have all special diamonds in them. So it's a mix of fairy dust and AB diamonds. And I'm actually really liking it. They're coming out beautifully. Uh, I just love the fairy dust and the way they've charted some of the ABs, it just adds some extra depth, dimension, and sparkle. So I'm really liking these small kits. They're great for days where I'm having a lot of pain. I don't feel like bringing out my big diamond painting and I only want to diamond paint for a short amount of time. I just do one of these. I get my diamond painting fix in and then I can go on with my day. So I really like these sets and I can't wait to see what other ones they are going to come out with. For uh, this whip and chat, I'm going to be using the Diamond Art Club tray that came with the kits. I also have uh, the pick and, um, what do they call it? Twist and pick pen that I'm going to be using. I'm using it with the putty. So I have it in the single placer. If you haven't seen this, this is the new Diamond Art Club pen that's coming in their new toolkits. It's pre-filled with putty. They send extras in case you run out. I have showed people how to refill them on the last two unboxings I've done. So you can check out that video. And then I just decided to leave this multi-placer in, which is their thin plastic multi-placer. And I put some putty in that. I did also spend the other day getting all of the putty out of this pan and putting in this red wax. I wanted to try it, have it beside me in case I ran into troubles uh, with the putty or I just wanted to try something new. Yeah, I haven't really used it for any length of time, but it is here. Uh, I, I really like this putty and what I'm finding, at least with these dazzle kits, is it works well with ABs and I don't know if it's my climate or what, but I'm able to use this pen and their putty with ABs on these kits. So I'm really stoked for that because uh, as most of you know, putty and ABs usually don't mix. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that other people are experiencing that too. Let me know in the comments if in your climate, are you, are you able to use the putty with the AB diamonds or is it sticking? I'm very curious because for me in my climate, which is in Canada and BC, so it's kind of mild. Uh, it's not humid, it's, it's, you know, it's just, how do I describe it? I don't know. I've lived with it my whole life. It's not bad at all. But anyway, let's uh, get started. So what I've been doing is I've just cut out the diamonds. They do come labeled for each flower. So they have their own little packet diamonds. I cut them out and I just grab one at a time and I do the corresponding uh, symbol on the canvas. And then I've been storing the extras in these baggies. I will be putting dividers in the baggies so they stand up straighter, but I thought this is a great way to collect some good quality fairy dust diamonds that I could uh, use in other kits to bling it out. So I have this going as well. The neat thing about the Diamond Art Club trays, if you didn't know, in the, sorry, I'm, I'm, I've got my camera set up a bit differently so it's closer to the canvas. I know the last whip and chat, I really wasn't paying attention and it kind of wasn't really focused, partly because I was, working on a very large section. But the thing I like is look at the size difference of the trays. So this one on the left, the smaller one, comes with their mini dazzle kits. And then this big one comes with their regular diamond painting. So you could collect two different sizes and have an entire tray set up with it. So I'm really excited. I think I am gonna collect some of these and use them to kit up in. Sorry if you hear the cat meowing because it does come with its little stopper that you can put in the spout. And when you put the lid on, it goes one way, so if you're struggling with it, flip it around the other way. But when you put the lid on, it actually does click into place and you can shake this 
however hard you want and that lid is not coming out. So it is pretty secure and I think I could stack these up either in a tower system or even in just like the clear plastic containers I use for my catered trays, but stack them like this and you'd have the label visible whether you put it on here or on the side and you could have a whole setup for basically free from the toolkits collecting these. So I think I am going to try collecting at least enough maybe to kit up the dazzle trays in. Anyways, let's get started here. So I'm just going to grab and do random uh, colors. And then once I'm done with the color, I'm going to put it in its little baggie. So Before I start talking about me, don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know how you guys are doing. I also thought if you're new here and you just joined my channel, oh, let me zoom in again. And you just joined my channel, please uh, say hi, introduce yourself. I do have a pretty good memory and people who regularly comment, I get to know you quite well. So yeah, please leave me a comment. Let me know how you're doing, who you are if you're new. Let me know when you started diamond painting, what kind of diamond paintings you like to paint, and maybe a little bit about you personally, whatever you'd like to share. You know, I'm an open book and I'm always... Let me just get my numbers sorted here. And I'm always telling you all about me and my struggles. So if you struggle with some health problems uh, or mental health, anxiety, depression, and you want to talk about it or let me know, please uh, comment down below. I'd love to get to know a lot of you a little bit better. Uh, you know all about me, but uh, unless you've shared before, I don't know a lot about you. And if you share some memorable information, like maybe what you struggle with, I, I, I have a pretty good memory and um, I, I, I will remember. So uh, definitely, if you feel comfortable, and this is a safe space. It is safe here on YouTube. I also have a Facebook group, DAC Fans Canada. It celebrates everything Diamond Art Club. We also do allow other licensed diamond paintings. Uh, there are some exceptions but um, it is also a safe place and every Monday I have a mental health Monday post go up where everybody can share where they are uh, for the week uh, I have colored hearts and you kind of put the color that you are feeling for the week and if you're struggling you can elaborate on the comment section hi Abby Shh. you can elaborate in the comment section and I try and, and be very good about uh, taking a look at that post throughout the day and I also have some mods that are really good about it too and we want to make sure everybody feels heard, uh, listened to and if you need help uh, we're there to help guide you uh, how best to get help yourself so it is a safe space. If you have any trouble with anybody uh, please message me privately and let me know and I will take care of it because like I said my space is always safe and if at any time uh, somebody doesn't feel safe I want to know about it and I will deal with it accordingly. The last time I filmed the Whip and Chat was actually on Father's Day. What did I do on Father's Day? Oh yeah, we had my stepson, so we went to my in-laws for a lunch like we usually do. I stayed there a couple of hours, then we came home, and of course my stepson played his basketball PlayStation game for the rest of the day. He really likes that. It was fun watching him too. He actually had his... I don't know what you call it. He's in the type of school that goes up to grade seven, so kindergarten to grade seven, and then the next school is grade eight to 12. So he's just graduated from the first school, I'll call it elementary school, and um, he actually won a couple awards. So he is, his family is Catholic, so he does go to a Catholic school, and he won an award. And I can't remember the exact wording, but essentially it was the student that is most like Christ. So the person, basically a good person, you know, you act like Christ. And uh, yeah, just a generally overall good person. He's always helpful to other people. He's always caring about other people before himself. And I was really proud that he won that award. I thought of all the awards, you know, there were some awards for best athlete and best like academic student, but I thought the one he won was um, really good. And I'm really happy that that's what he won. And then he also won a little bursary that he can put towards his tuition next year. That um, again was very similar and it was, um, I'm trying to remember now, but again, it was something along the lines of also, you know, the best student, most Christ-like 
um, generally good person, good student, helpful, all of those positive qualities. So uh, really happy that those are the two awards he won. I know he really wanted to win a basketball award, but I think uh, the ones he won were amazing. And he was very grateful and happy with the awards he won. And as is I don't like saying stepmom. I've never used that term around him, but um, I guess that's what I am considered. Uh, very proud of him. He's such a good kid. His mom is amazing. Raised him very well. He's such a well-mannered boy. He's never had attitude problems or trouble in school or trouble, you know, in general, like what kids get up to. He's always been a very good kid, so I have to thank his mother for raising him well, uh, too. Uh, he lives with his mom, and we see him usually every other weekend. It really depends on what he's doing, because now he's a teenager. He, he is in a lot of extracurricular activities, which often happen on the weekend, especially during basketball season. That's very important to him, so sometimes we don't see him every other weekend just because he's busy and also my husband works every other weekend. So it's a little bit of matching up schedules, but um, we do make, make a good effort to see him as often as we can. He also lives in Vancouver and we live about an hour each way. So it's a bit of a drive too, but I'm very proud. You know, I, I doubt I will be able to have children of my own just because of my health. And, and I've, I've, I've never been one to really want children. Like that's never been a goal of mine. If it happens, great. But it's not something that, that's like at the top of my priority list. Again, it just comes back to my health and um, kind of the lifestyle me and my husband like to um, live. Uh, we both like our downtime and we both um, need a lot of time to recharge our batteries from social situations, even just from work, right? Any kind of social situation. So, um, yeah, it's never been a high priority on our list. And I'm very grateful that uh, I do have a stepson that is amazing and uh, doesn't hate me. So that's always a positive. As you can see, well, you might not be able to see, but I'm placing the ABs here with the putty and it's not sticking at all. I'm not having any problems. So please let me know if you experience the same thing. Is the Diamond Art Club putty sticking to your ABs at all? I was wondering if it might in certain climates, like if the putty is a little bit softer, but I do know that they are working on upgrading the putty formula, making it less stringy from the first version that they made. I actually didn't find it too bad, the first version. But um, I don't know if this is the new improved version yet. Um, I don't think it is. I think it's still the old version, but I think it works really well. And I'm really liking this new pen. It's a nice upgrade from the basic pens. It's actually pretty ergonomic. It's actually really comfortable to hold and it's super lightweight. So I'm very happy with this product. So here are all of the ABs placed in there. None of them stuck with putty at all. But yeah, these kits are really fun to work on. Now I'm going to try and keep um, these diamonds together in their bag. Just give me a minute here. I find a very helpful way to empty all of the diamonds in the tray is just tapping. Am I in camera? Just tapping the tray like this and they all seem to slide down there. There's always one or two that are stragglers, but generally it works really well by tapping like that. And if you find your diamonds are jumping out and making a mess, just put the lid on before you uh, pour your diamonds into your containers or bags or whatever you're doing with them. Let's get our next color here. Let me know too if you've purchased one of these mini dazzle sets, uh, which one you got and have you started working on it? I'd love to know what you are thinking of them. I really like them and I can't wait to see them come out with more. I'm somebody that likes to purchase everything from one site. It just makes it easier. That also helps with shipping, right? As international, we need to meet a certain threshold for free shipping. So um, these little products just help uh, in our cart. So uh, I'm excited to see what more. I did want to get the makeup one. Uh, but I don't wear makeup and I'm not a makeup artist or anything. So uh, I just elected to get the flower one to start, see if I like it. And then maybe I'll add the makeup one next time. It just looks like it has a lot of fun colors in it. So what else happened after Father's Day? I did have a follow-up with a new doctor I'm seeing. So I'm now under the care of a GI specialist. He's actually a general surgeon as well. 
Um, I, some of you might have heard I was admitted to the hospital a few weeks ago with severe abdominal pain. There, there are kind of a few things that came out about that. They're pretty certain, or he's pretty certain I have gastroparesis, which is basically slowing of the digestive tract. I do have the condition where my automatic nervous system is broken. So digestion is something that is automatic, so it can also be broken. So it looks like I've developed that and he did start me on a new medication uh, called Maxaran that helps with motility, also can help with nausea and it seems to really work for me. Uh, I take it about half an hour before uh, every meal, so three times a day and I've noticed a huge difference. I'm not nauseous 24-7 and I'm, I'm finding my digestive system is working a lot, a lot more normal. So really happy about that. He is going to send me for a special nuclear medicine test just to confirm the diagnosis. But based on my symptoms and my presentation and the fact that I have the automatic uh, dysfunction, it's pretty likely I am dealing with a degree of that. So it is nice to have another diagnosis, even though it just adds to my list of I don't know how many diagnoses I have now. But when you have a diagnosis, you have an answer, right? So uh, anytime it, there's a diagnosis, I'm actually pretty darn happy because some of the things I deal with, it's very hard to diagnose. They don't show up on tests. So um, it's usually just, you know, an expert doctor and uh, who knows how to look for certain symptoms of certain diseases and is able to diagnose it. And then once you have the diagnosis, of course, you can have the proper treatment, right? But he also sent me for an ultrasound of my abdomen and they found that I had 10 gallstones in my gallbladder. Now they say that not everybody needs their gallstones removed. Some people can live their entire life with them and they don't really bother them. But uh, based on how I presented to the emergency, I was in severe pain and projectile vomiting. Um, it's quite likely that the reason I went to emerge wasn't the gastroparesis per se. Uh, that was a factor, but the main reason was probably a gallstone was stuck in the duct. Just due to how much pain, I was in severe pain, like 20 out of 10. It was really bad. I was like almost, I wasn't delusional, but I was in so much pain that like, you know, it, I wasn't in good shape. Now let me just find the baggie for this one. So, um... And the medicines they gave me, some of them were antispasmatic medications, so stop spasms, which happens when you have a, a gallstone stuck in the duct. You get spasms because the body's trying to get that gallstone out. So um, he's pretty confident that the fact I have 10 gallstones in there, one of them probably got stuck, and that's really what sent me to emergency. I just had a few different things going on at once. So um, I've elected to have him remove it. I really do not want to experience another attack like that. It was horrible. I even told my husband, you know, what do you think? Should I just wait and see if it happens again? And he said he doesn't want to see me in that kind of pain again. It was awful to watch me so um, and how sick I was. So I'm going to have it removed. It's going to be done laparoscopically, which means they, and now let me just find the next symbol. So laparoscopically, they usually put four incisions somewhere into the abdomen and they use fancy machinery to take out the gallbladder. So I'll be getting that done. I'm on the wait list. I don't know when it's going to be. They kind of said maybe in two to four months. I did ask them to try to get it done as soon as possible because I'm also on the wait list for surgery for my arm. And I did actually find out that they're planning that surgery for September. So it's a little ways away, but actually we're in July, almost in July. August. So it's only three months, probably two, two, two and a half months away. So I'm not too stressed about it. I had a feeling I wouldn't get surgery until the fall anyway. So it wasn't a big, you know, um, I wasn't upset about it. So the arm surgery looks like it'll be in September. So if they could get my gallbladder out sooner than later, that way I can heal. Uh, the surgeon said I, I would probably need about three weeks healing from the gallbladder surgery before I had the arm surgery just to be safe. So uh, as long as I have three weeks in between, I'll be fine. It'll be a lot for my body. Um, having surgery is really risky for me now because I have something called central apnea where my brain doesn't tell my lungs to breathe. It is part of the automatic dysfunction disorder I have uh, that was developed with nerve damage to the main nerves in the brachial plexus from my arm injury. Yeah, my apnea can be really, it's actually classified as severe. They actually just put me on the proper machine 
Uh, I was on the wrong breathing machine for two years, you guys. I actually just filed a report uh, complaint to the College of Doctors in my province for the doctor who originally did the first sleep study, like in hospital sleep study where you sleep overnight, because one, the study wasn't done correctly. The results weren't reliable. Uh, they recommended the wrong machine for my type of apnea. There was no follow-up from the doctor. I never received a phone call, which I was supposed to receive, you know, where he went over the results with me and kind of told me what I need and a little bit about central apnea. I mean, I am a nurse, but uh, I don't know everything. So uh, I should have had follow-up. I never did. They didn't send the, the medical reports to my family doctor. I had to call them twice to do it. The first time, they still didn't do it, so I had to call them again. There was a lot of things uh, missed. Uh, basically, it fell through the cracks, so I had the wrong breathing machine for two years. And essentially, basically, I was sick for two years because I was hypoxic, which means lack of oxygen, uh, to, my, to all of my tissues because, you know, apnea affects the whole body. A lack of oxygen from not being able to breathe, uh, your circulating oxygen is lower. So I um, essentially was hypoxic for two years. And that's why I think I was so sick all the time. Like I was always, when, as soon as I woke up, I felt sick. I was dizzy. I was nauseous. I just felt almost flu-like. Like I just felt really sick and shaky and just unwell. I couldn't do much because it would just take so much energy out of me again because I was hypoxic. So yeah, I, I think I've been on the BiPAP now for, is it three or four weeks now? And in that regard, I feel so much better. I... I, you can hear it in my voice. I'm filming this at like 6, 6.30 now in the morning and I don't feel sick. I feel like I could, you know, go take the dog for a walk and maybe run to the grocery store if I had to and I would be okay. Whereas before, even brushing my teeth was a hard task. I couldn't even shower every day because it would, just took so much out of me. So yeah, it's it's really bad uh, that, that I fell through the cracks. I had severe, or I have severe central apnea. So I finally just filed that complaint. So we'll see what happens with that. All the, 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 I'm not looking for anything from them. What I want is to make sure that no other patient goes through what I went through. Because not only was I sick for two years, but it was also very dangerous. I was hypoxic for two years. I would have, when I was diagnosed, I was 32, I think. I'm thir I just turned 35. So yeah, I'm really young and I could have died. One night, I could have just not woken up. That's how bad the apnea is. Uh, it's really, really scary. My rest break was only four a minute. That was probably on a good night. My oxygen level was 80% when it should have been 100 or at least close to 100. And um, yeah, I, I very well think I could have just, you know, fallen asleep and not woken up. So um, why I filed the complaint really is I just want to make sure one, they really should review other people, especially people that have been flagged for central apnea and make sure that they, they have the right machine and the right treatment and they receive the right follow up. Because if he didn't follow up with me, chances are he hasn't followed up with other patients, right? So, um, I hope that they look into that and I hope they do it rather quickly because I would hate for another patient to go through what I've been through the last two years. Uh, and how dangerous it could be. So um, I've been on that BiPAP for about four weeks now. And yeah, I am feeling better in that regards. I'm feeling more normal, you know. I, I still wake up and I'll feel really tired because I have insomnia and I don't sleep well because of the pain. I'm constantly waking up and having to reposition my arm. So I, I still don't sleep well, but I don't wake up feeling deathly ill. So that's been positive news. Um, I've been having a problem with it though. Because my pressure has to be so high to keep my airways open and oxygenated, my stomach has been filling up with air. If you know what the lungs look like, they're kind of, you know, you have one lung on the left, one lung on the right, and a long, tu long tube in the middle. Uh, there's actually two tubes. One goes to your lungs and one goes to your stomach, right? So your esophagus and your trachea. And it kind of forks uh, in the middle like this. So the CPAP or the BiPAP is supposed to push air into the lungs. We'll just go over this way uh, to the lungs. But because the pressure is so high, some of the air can seep out and come into the stomach. So I've been experiencing that. It's called aerophagia. And uh, essentially it's air trapping in the stomach. And it actually can be quite painful. 
Uh, so we've had to slowly lower my pressures down while still trying to maintain a proper breathing rate and proper oxygenation. I still think it's a little bit too high. I still wake up with a tummy full of air. It's not as painful as it was, but um, it's very uncomfortable and it can take quite a few hours for all of that air to work its way out because I do have a slow digestive system, right? So um, I'm dealing with that right now, uh, but luckily I've been able to tolerate lower pressures. I'm hoping they can go a little bit lower and see. The doctor, I saw the doctor, the respirologist on, um, when did I see? Just a couple days ago. Um, she's happy so far with how it's working. The pressures she's okay with um, because my numbers are good. Uh, but she suggested to get a wedge pillow and try sleeping on an angle. So I did order one of those. It just came the other day, yesterday. So I finally slept with it last night and I think it really helped. It raises uh, or it is about seven inches tall and it's kind of like a, a hill. So it kind of gradually gets up to seven inches. Um, it's comfortable. It didn't hurt my neck. My neck actually feels really good today. So that's a positive because I usually wake up with terrible neck pain. Um, so yeah, that helps. So I will see over the next few nights uh, if that improves the air trapping. I guess it will just help the air to keep moving, moving through the digestive system and not uh, going into my stomach or staying in my stomach. So hopefully that works out for me. Also, the respirologist decided to give me or prescribe me a puffer. It's called Symbacort. It's a combination of a corticosteroid and uh, what's the other ingredient? I think like a bronchodilator. So it opens up the airways and the steroid gives it a, a little extra push like a little extra oomph, it works better. So I just started that a few days ago, three days ago to be exact. And it's helping, like my airways feel so clear now, whereas I, I do get a lot of shortness of breath. I just assumed it was from the scar tissue covering the nerves and the damage I have that I'm waiting for the surgery for. Uh, but this puffer has seemed to help open my airways so I can uh, breathe easier. So that's good. I'm hoping that continued use of that, I use it twice a day or more if I need it will make my breathing a lot easier so I can tolerate walking because I really do struggle walking the dog. I've been, let me just find the next number here. I have been trying to once a day walk with my walker. So when I walk, I either need a cane walker or I need a wheelchair. I have a power wheelchair. Usually with the dog, I use the power wheelchair. It's easier because she pulls on the leash, even though she's six pounds for somebody with nerve damage in their arms, that is hard to handle. So with the wheelchair, she, she can't pull as much. I kind of use the chair to pull the leash. So it is better for me, but I'm not getting proper exercise to my legs when I'm using the wheelchair. So I've been trying to walk at least once, but my breathing has been troubling me. So I'm hoping with this new puffer, I'll be able to walk a little bit better and more comfortably. Maybe I can go on a little bit of a longer walk. Usually when I walk with my walker, we have to make it a short walk, which I know she doesn't like. So that's why I usually just take the wheelchair. It's better for her. She can get a longer walk in. And um, I'm also less impatient in the wheelchair. <laughs> when I walk her with my walker, um, she's a sniffer. She's not like a, a walker. So she has to stop every two seconds to sniff the grass. So um, it can get very annoying when I'm not feeling good and I'm walking with the walker and I feel like I'm going to pass out and I just want to go home. So I'm trying not to rely on the wheelchair as much and it's been, it's been going okay. I've been, luckily the weather's been nice. So it's a lot easier to get out there and walk. I would like to get stronger. I'm still pretty deconditioned and weak. I mean, I've been sick for a few years now with various medical problems, uh, medical problems that make me feel really sick, especially that uh, hypoxia from the apnea. So yeah, I've been pretty sedentary, I would say for the last couple of years. So I've lost a lot of muscle mass in my legs. My legs are very weak. They get very tired, very easy, very heavy. I also have, I think, a pinched sciatic nerve on my left leg. It really hurts when I walk long distances. And it feels like I'm walking on the bones in my foot. So it's really painful. I have found some shoes that, that help. And they're the only shoes I can wear right now. 
So I've just ordered another uh, pair, a pair of boots, so that when it's lightly raining, I can wear the boots and uh, still get a walk-in. But yeah, that's that. I also had injections. Uh, last week I had some lidocaine injections. So they usually inject Botox every, what is it, 12 weeks? 4, 8, 12, yeah, every three months. Uh, we usually do Botox in the head, the neck, and the shoulders. Uh, but Botox can make me pretty sick. And the last time I had it, I, I was sick for two weeks. And it kind of makes you feel flu-like, or at least it does me. And um, I was pretty sick from it. So I asked her if we could take a break from Botox. Now that I'm having some extra treatments with the infusions of lidocaine, I really wanted to focus on that and see if that helps more. Because what I was finding was I was always sick from the injections and in a flare-up that I don't think I experienced the full benefits of the infusion. So uh, she agreed that we could pause, uh, I got cat hair here, that we could pause Botox. So it was due last week. So far I'm okay. She did do some lidocaine injection so that helps reset the muscles and hopefully reset them to a resting state. Um, it did, of course, cause a flare-up, like I always expect. Um, probably four or five days of just being overly sore and um, lots of pain. But that has subside, subsided. So I'm hoping that I can get away with no Botox. It's also a toxin. They don't really know like long-term studies and complications. I, I think muscles can kind of degrade when you have these kind of injections like uh, it can turn them kind of fibrotic which causes its own problems too so yeah we're trying that I mean it's only been a week so I can't really talk speak to it but I'm not in horrendous pain so that's a good thing and then I briefly touched on uh, my stepson's graduation uh, I originally wasn't uh, going because it was just for parents, but then they allowed any other family members during the kind of reception time So it was just for parents for the first hour So I sat at a coffee shop in, in Vancouver Waiting for that hour and then I went by the store and picked up some flowers for him. His mom asked me to and, and I picked up a card from us and Then went back there and I actually did really good you guys I surprised myself and I surprised my husband uh, we were there. We when did we arrive? We arrived at eleven thirty, so we left home at about ten. Yeah, about ten, and we didn't get home until about six. And I lasted the entire time. I did have to take a pain medication, but just once. I wasn't in agony. I wasn't, you know, super uncomfortable. I tolerated it really well. Now the next day is another story. I was flat on my back and I was in so much pain, but. I tolerated his graduation. I was really proud of myself and it just warmed my heart. When he saw me the first time there, he had this look in his, look in his eyes like he was so happy that, that I was there and he was waving at me and it just, it made my heart melt. I almost teared up. I'm tearing up now kind of talking about it because like I said, I don't know if I'll ever have my own children. So he is my, I treat him like my own son and um, I'm very proud of him. And it's really nice to see that, you know, I'm wanted. I know I hear lots of stories of stepmoms, you know, being the evil one and the kids, you know, fighting back and not listening and being mean, but he's so respectful. And um, I don't get to go to a lot of his stuff because I've been sick the last couple of years. So I really can't tolerate anything outside of the house. So it was a real joy that I was able to go and uh, I was able to last and nobody could tell that I was in pain. I hit it, my husband said I hit it really well. I definitely was uncomfortable, but um, I hit it really well, so I was really happy. He also has a new sister who I think she's just turned five months, and she's really cute. That's the first time I met her, and she loved me too. She couldn't stop smiling at me and just being happy every time she looked at me, so that warmed my heart too. And yeah, I was just so proud that I lasted the entire time. It's the first kind of thing that I've been able to attend of his that's kind of, you know, outside school hours in Vancouver. So uh, very happy I was able to do that. And then on Thursday I had, let me just fix that diamond. On Thursday I had, um, or I had started my next lidocaine infusion. 
So I also get infusions of it, and it's infused by a little needle that goes under the subcutaneous tissue, so the fat, and they put it in the abdomen because that's often, often the fattiest place in women. And um, they send me home with a little contraption. I'll actually show you it here. I still have it running because it's going to run for 26 hours. Now I might need to zoom out. I can't quite see the camera screen because the sun is coming in, but this is the contraption. I hope you can see it. There is this little balloon inside that they fill with the anesthetic. It pushes the medicine into this long tube that's attached to my abdomen, and it does that over 26 hours. Now, I can clamp it at any time, usually if you feel side effects, which I don't really feel many side effects with it this time. Uh, yesterday, I had horrible headaches, but I think that was more... Um, the pain in my neck from the car ride uh, because it was rainy and it was a bit of a tougher drive and I was really stressed. I don't know why I get so stressed in the car these days. I think it's because there's so many stupid drivers out there and I don't know how many near misses I saw of accidents. It's just I wish people would drive a lot safer. But yeah, my neck was killing me yesterday. I was actually in severe pain. I considered going to emergency, but I know that it's just from the car ride and I would wake up today feeling better and I do. Let me zoom in again. And I do feel better. So um, yeah, no real side effects. Sometimes it can cause dizziness. It can cause anxiety. It can cause a metallic taste in my mouth. It can cause numbness in my lips and my mouth, my throat. Um, I have experienced those when I initially started the therapy, but um, with anything, your body builds a tolerance to the dose, so we have to keep increasing the dose. And at the dose it is now, I don't experience any side effects. This is the second time we are doing this dose. The last time it worked amazingly. I had 100% pain relief for the first week, about 80% for the second week, 70% for the third week, and the fourth week I was back in a lot of pain. So it did last a good three weeks and it was a nice break from all of the pain I'm usually in. I always get worried because like I say the next day um, I'm in so much pain but it's from the car ride so happy today to wake up feeling better. My neck is not you know hurting me. My arm I'm not feeling any pain at all in my arm so it's working. So I'm hoping to have the same benefit of about three weeks, maybe even four weeks of pain relief. I know last time I uh, overdid it with running some errands and uh, setting up the bearded dragon tank. So uh, my husband did help me, but it still was a lot for me. So this time I'm, I've got nothing big planned. I don't have to do anything big, just the usual small errands with my husband. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, maybe this infusion will be a little bit... Um, better. It will last a little longer because I'm not doing crazy things that I shouldn't be doing. But yeah, that's going. It, it'll finish sometime today, I think. I do clamp it overnight. One, I want the pain relief during the day. And two, in case there's any side effects, I won't know when I'm sleeping. And uh, because I have central apnea, I'm a little bit scared to run a type of anesthetic while I'm sleeping. Uh, I'm sure that would affect my apnea. So I clamp it at night and then I open it in the day. If I start feeling any side effects, I'll clamp it for about half an hour and then I'll restart it. So that's what's going on uh, today, or not today. That's That happened a couple days ago. And then, yeah, here we, are, here we are on Saturday morning. I'm feeling better. I feel energized. I, I had a really good sleep, and I've been struggling with my sleep lately too. For some reason, I fall asleep, honestly, around 8 o'clock at night. I'm just so tired. So that's when I go to bed, 8 o'clock. And then I wake up at midnight and I'm wide awake until about 3 or 4 in the morning. And it's been awful. It leaves me feeling really unrested, very, very tired, so fatigued, low energy. And I don't really know why, what's changed. Nothing's changed that I know of unless it's maybe the lidocaine wearing off. But like there's nothing stressful going on really right now. And uh, I'm not sure why my body's decided to to do this. It's It's been going on, I think this is week 3 of that kind of pattern of, of sleeping. So last night I finally slept the whole night through 8 to about 4.30 in the morning. And that's when I usually wake up anyways. No alarm, it's just my body always wakes up. No matter what time I go to bed, I wake up at around 3.30 to 4.30 in the morning. Plans for today, not much. We usually do some grocery shopping. My husband is off this weekend, so he has three days off. So we'll probably fill up our fridge. 
walk the dog. So it looks like it's going to be a nice day. And then I'll probably get some diamond painting done. Aside from this mini set that I'm working on, I am also have kitted up one of my Hannah Lynn paintings. It's called Faye. I've only done a small corner of it. It's a round diamond painting. I felt like I wanted a, a break from squares and I just wanted to do a round. So I have that going, but I haven't been working on it often because I've just not been feeling well the, the past kind of week and a half. So I haven't gotten a lot done on that. I've been doing these one a day when I feel good and that seems to, to help. It helps with anxiety for sure. I'm a lot more calmer during the day once I have some diamond painting time in. It really does kind of center my, my nervous system. So I hope to start working on that one again soon. I'd also like to kit up a painting from another company. I really want to try the Crafties one that I um, was doing or that I unboxed a few days, a few weeks ago. I can't remember when it went up. I'd like to try it. I've also asked them, well, I said I would buy it, but they're sending me another kit for free. So thank you Crafties for doing that. They're going to send me a square kit because I know some people had said that the squares are a bit of a different experience and not, not a good one. So I want to see it for myself and then I'll better be able to recommend uh, the shop. You know, some shops are really good with one diamond shape, but not so good with the other. And it has to do with the supplier and, and the diamonds themselves. So I will definitely, uh, work on those. I want to work on them soon so I can get a feel for them. Yeah, I've ordered a square one, so that's already on the way. They're very fast. I don't think the last one took very long to arrive either. They do, I believe, drop ship from China. No extra fees on arrival, so that's always nice. But I also have a Jaded Gem Shop um, one of her pixel charted kits. I have the Cheriyuki one that she came out with a few weeks ago now. And I really want to try it. Uh, I haven't worked on a Jaded Gem Shop for well over a year. It just her, you know, computer rendered style is just not something that I enjoy with all of the confetti. It, um, while her paintings turn out nice, uh, I think they look better with this new pixel charted version, I think. Even a hybrid version, I think, is a little bit better. You can get the different detailed items to really stand out. And, and I really do think all diamond paintings should have some hand charting in it just to correct some of the, you know, um, objects in the painting. Because with the computer, things come out very blurry and, and not very clean. Uh, it's hard to tell what certain things are or there's really weird colors in areas that like y there shouldn't be that kind of color. So I'm uh, really excited to start her pixel charted one. I do also have a Leo, uh, Leoba Bruckner diamond painting on the way. I don't think it's arrived yet. Is it in my bedroom? I can't remember. Has it arrived? It might have arrived. I can't remember you guys, but I, uh, she's an artist I've really wanted to try. Um, she was at DIY Moon Shop. Uh, but then they changed their uh, kind of shop around by the time I was ready to order from them and I didn't like what I was seeing so I just never ordered. So I'm excited to have a Leoba Bruckner painting in my uh, collection. I can't remember what the name of the kit is but it's a lady uh, with some flowers in the background. She also just dropped uh, some really cool artwork by her too that I really want but it would be a bigger size so I think what I'll do is finish the two I have before I order another one. Ordering from Jaded Gem Shop as a Canadian is really expensive. Our dollar is crap and uh, shipping is outrageous. It's like I think six around $60, so it is crazy these days. It's just really hard on small shops uh, the way the postal service has uh, increased prices and created oversized charges and stuff. So that is unfortunate. But her quality is good from, from what I know from the last time I worked on them. So um, it's kind of one of those treat treat canvases you know you buy once in a while when there's a sale so I really want to start on that one and I have a couple enablers outpost kits that I'd like to start on I have I think three in my stash one of them is hand charted so I would like to give that a go though Elizabeth has been working on it so I've been seeing uh, the progress of it and it looks really good I think they are going to become one of the you know Kind of in the top runnings as far as diamond painting shops go. Their new canvas, their new supplier is awesome. Much better than the last one. The diamonds are looking good. The canvas is even better. The, the charting is better. I think they are right up there in my top kind of three, four list. So uh, 
that's great for them. They are hard workers, hard working Americans, and they deserve all of the love for their shop. I have a, a couple other paintings from New To Me shops that uh, I also want to unbox. I don't think I'm going to work on one of them. I just don't like what I see from the little bit I see. The canvas is also covered in bugs. It's disgusting. So <laughs> I um, I don't know. I will unbox it, but I don't think I'll work on that one. But we'll see. I, I am finished the rose. Let's look at it up close. Here she is with all the fairy dust, some of the ABs and the leaves. Very, very pretty. I love it. I think that is it for this whip and chat. I don't know how long I've been talking for. I can't see, but I pretty much updated you on the last two weeks. Please let me know in the comments how you are doing. Like I said, if you are new here, introduce yourself. Let me know your, your real name and a little bit about you. I, I like to get to know people. I like to create a community. I don't just want this to be me talking and not interacting with you, not answering your comments, not getting to know you. Uh, that's not my vibe. I, I want to create a community um, of like-minded people that support each other. So uh, if you haven't joined us over on Facebook, please do. It's DAC Fans Canada. We celebrate all things Diamond Art Club and also some other licensed shops. There are a few exceptions that you can find in the group rules, but uh, it's a great group of mostly women. We do have some male diamond painters in there too uh, that, that interact from time to time, but it's a great supportive group and uh, we keep it very safe. If there's any problems, uh, we fix them pretty quickly. So don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. That really helps uh, my videos get out there, get more uh, new members, which I would love to have. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you. You can hit that subscribe button. If you didn't know, it's absolutely free and it really helps my channel. You can also click the notification bell to be notified when I do post new videos. I try and stick to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Sometimes there will be extra videos videos on the off days. But otherwise, until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you again. Bye!